So looking at Canada's agriculture and agri-food industries, what would you identify as some of its key strengths and weaknesses? You know, when I look at the key strengths, of course, we, we start with the basic building block of, you know, we have a, a, a large amount of land and, and fresh water. You know, those are two of the scarcest commodities when we turn around and look at, you know, the world and the challenge in, in intensive agriculture. So when we marry that up with a network of R&D and uh, our farmers' ability to be early adopters of technology, what we've been able to do is really drive innovation you know, at the farm gate on new varieties, new cropping, uh, you know, um, new crops, and then also you know, in the uh, commercialization of you know, cutting edge farming practices. So if we look at zero minimum tillage technologies, soil conservation, water management, you know, uh, ag agronomy that's boosted our yields dramatically. You know, these have all been, you know, very strong assets. Where, where I'm looking at a bit of a challenge for us, though, is we don't have such a developed value-added processing infrastructure. And I think that, you know, we, uh, we lack scale. And so, you know, with that, I think innovation into, you know, new plant-based protein and new, you know, technologies and innovation, the digit digitization of agriculture, because of our scale, we're going to have that opportunity here in Canada. I think those are all strong assets as we drive forward. And the elephant in the room, COVID-19, how has it impacted Canada's agriculture sector? And what are your hopes for, you know, the coming months and the coming years? What do you hope as well our governments and other uh, institutions will do to promote uh, not just the recovery, but hopefully a stronger and more competitive Canadian agri-food sector beyond? Well, you know, I, I've been asked to be, uh, you know, one of the leaders. So I'm leading the national strategy table on agriculture and food on the post-COVID economic strategy. And, you know, it, it is very important to realize that in, in, in the uh, post-COVID environment, you know, agriculture, relatively speaking, did well in terms of, you know, reacting. We were one of the sectors least hit. Now, that doesn't mean we weren't affected. Uh, you know, we had skills shortages and labor shortages with the temporary foreign worker program, you know, uh, intaking a lot less than uh, traditional and, you know, we, we rely on about 60,000 temporary workers to come into our ag sector annually. We saw an effect, of course, on supply chains, you know, ports, railways, you know, banks. I mean, we don't think about banks functioning and our ability to get paid for our cargo as a limiting factor in a, in a global supply chain. But all of those things kind of led to, you know, really, really, um, you know, slow payment and, and, and slow kind of uh, functioning of the supply chain. But, you know, in general, the global demand for food and, you know, empty grocery store shelves around the world, you know, really had a strong demand for Canadian agri commodities. When I look forward, though, there is an additional layer of cost that we have to look at now, you know, with hygiene and with, uh, with um, you know, efforts to keep our employees and our food products safe. This is going to be an element of cost that we either have to use innovation and uh, get more competitive and drive our cost base down you know, or we're going to need to ensure that we have an ability to either pass those on or government's going to help us with those kinds of, of costs as we go forward. When I look forward to the sector overall, it's critical that we drive the digital agricultural transformation. So, you know, when I, when I focus on infrastructure and our government's focus, we're going to be insisting on broadband, um, you know, investments across the country to ensure that rural areas have access to modern, fast, you know, broadband coverage to be able to digitize our sector. Physical infrastructure, ports, railways, roads, and connectivity into gateways and corridors for long-term trade infrastructure is going to be critical, as is the development of skills and the access to global markets. So when I look at those things, those will all drive towards the innovation agenda to, uh, to try and feed the world, you know, as we look forward. Canada's got a great opportunity. What are some of the global trends or mega trends that you see impacting the future of agri-food uh, and how is Canada positioned to uh, take advantage of them? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to split that down into, into one thing. I, I see very much in the near term that, you know, a renewed focus on food inflation and food security and government's role in, you know, uh, maintaining buffer stocks and things like that is going to be a kind of a, a boost for demand in the short term for the Canadian agri-commodity sector. But as I look forward, you know, we just got to look at fundamental trends. You know, the fundamental consumption of plant-based protein is rising. You know, water efficiency and sustainability, you know, of agri production is top of mind of consumers and getting more top of mind as we look at the consumer of the future. You know, those consumers that are in their teens today, you know, are what I call the smartphone consumer. They're the ones that grew up with that smartphone in their hands all the time. 
They care about the environment. They want information at their fingertips. They want uh, traceability, uh, food safety, identity preservation. All of these things are going to be important. So that's where, you know, technology is going to be very important for us to be able to keep up and to be able to drive. If you want to, to have, let's say, a blockchain certified, traceable, food safe, identity preserved uh, agricultural system, Canada has the chance to do that. Try doing it on one acre farms in India. Very, very difficult. Try doing it in Canada where we have uh, scale in agriculture. I think it's going to be not only doable, but it's part of the ag of the future. So what sort of investments with, if possible, an emphasis on foreign, given this is a series on, on investment attraction, uh, would you highlight in terms of Canada's ability to attract world-class agri-food companies? And why were they drawn to the region uh, in the first place? Well, I think that, you know, the reliable supply of raw materials is going to be one of the foundational uh, parts of attracting you know, innovation uh, in food processing and technology, you know, companies that are looking to scale up the production and supply of food and uh, food ingredients and semi-refined agricultural products to a growing middle-class consumer in Asia and in the world. That's kind of what we're going to be trying to marry up. So I do see, you know, investments by companies who are looking at commercializing, uh, you know, wide-scale uh, technologies in agriculture You know, for instance, you know, autonomous vehicle, you know, technologies related to, you know, farm implements and uh, farming uh, management practices. You know, we expect that, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning and the ability to utilize, you know, those uh, types of technologies in the application of pesticides, herbicides, you know, agronomic management practices, decision support systems using sophisticated imagery and, and cameras and drones These are all going to be part of agriculture of the future, where we're able to gather data, we're able to analyze data, and we're able to give that traceable food product to the consumer's demand. So that's, you know, the big opportunity is marrying up that global demand for protein and, uh, and uh, commodities to the value added and the technology and innovation side. That's Canada's opportunity. As an investor yourself, and of course, as a competitive company in the marketplace, what sort of investments do you welcome? Do you look forward to? Do you want to see more of? Yeah, listen, it, it, this is all about, you know, commercialization of innovation and, you know, the ability to take products like, you know, protein, starches, fibers, flours, fractions, and to create, you know, nutritious, tasty, cost-effective food products that will be consumed by consumers both here and abroad. So, you know, that's the kind of, you know, investment ecosystem that I hope we will be able to develop on the food side is an ability to truly develop that, you know, value added extrusion, you know, snacks, you know, bakery mixes, you know, pasta. I mean, these are products that I think have tremendous growth potential where it's utilizing healthier, you know, uh, you know, ingredients that, you know, are going to be able to deliver existing foods but in a supercharged superfood format and so i think that that's uh, that's you know very exciting when i look beyond that i think that uh, you know both the fiber and the fuel side have tremendous opportunity in agriculture so the ability for a truly you know renewable fuel you know using canola for replacement of diesel and jet fuel or you know using fiber you know that are agri waste when we process protein and starch and fiber, let's say, in pulses, you know, into industrial applications for, you know, either uh, paper or plastics. You know, these are the kind of things where it's an integrated, you know, processing that focuses on, on food, on, on industrial uses, and on uh, feed. So I think those three opportunities together magnify the growth potential. How would you describe the availability of talent in Canada's agri-food uh, production and management, as well as on the R&D side? Well, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, our R&D business is centered in Saskatchewan is because, you know, the University of Saskatchewan has been a, a tremendous resource for us, for graduates. So if we look at our application scientists and our R&D center in Saskatoon, you know, we have the uh, best and brightest, you know, coming out of both the bachelor's, master's and the PhD programs. That's been really, really helpful. When I look at, you know, the overall uh, management talent pool here, You know, we've got a very strong industry where so many businesses are reliant on agriculture that, you know, we can source a lot of great expertise, whether it be accounting, finance, transportation, logistics, 
you know, marketing, uh, merchandising. We've been able to build a tremendous team here, you know, from uh, from people. And, you know, what we're seeing also is that the educational institutions realize the importance of agriculture and it's changing. You know, today, uh, computer programmers are our target for our IT group. You know, we have a, a whole group of programmers that work full time on enabling our business. You know, this is the, the difference that agriculture is not just the farm gate anymore. It's far beyond. And, you know, here in Canada, we recognize that. And I think that's where, you know, our talent pool is going to become one of our biggest advantages. We talked about innovation and R&D. What about the protein industry supercluster? Is that, a, is that a, a, an important advantage for Canada as a country and also specifically in terms of att attracting more uh, foreign investment in, uh, in the sector? Well, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, certainly one of the uh, architects of, of, uh, of, you know, writing and building the protein supercluster. And so, you know, Protein Industries Canada just gives us that ability now to leverage the experience of those of us that are considered more large and, you know, uh, who are, you know, kind of driving uh, innovation. You know, I have a project, for instance, that was just approved. And, you know, I'm proud to say that, you know, we've partnered with a uh, a startup, a woman-led business, and we're going to be developing pulses-based uh, tofu and uh, non-meat alternatives. You know, very dynamic, young, you know, woman entrepreneur. And, you know, she gets to benefit from our work in terms of being a larger business in the cluster. And we get to benefit from her enthusiasm and her innovation and her drive. And that's what the cluster is all about, is attracting, you know, large companies and small companies to partner together and to truly make uh, you know innovation commercialized, that's going to lead to investment. There's no doubt in my mind that Protein Industries Canada is going to be a driver of investment, and uh, you know we're looking forward to the follow-ons to this because we've done very well in commercializing our our supercluster, and I think that the best is yet to come. And finally, you've taken AGT from a startup to a global leader. So if we consider Canada perhaps not a startup but let's say an SME, how do we make Canada a global leader in agri food, of course? You know, you know, I think that, uh, you know, we're, we're an example of a company that uh, that took a value chain approach and, and you know, we invested in assets at origination, a value added processing. You know, we got involved in freight and logistics. Now we're involved in port and processing facilities around the world and really global distribution. So I think that, you know, the super cluster is going to help us to get companies together, you know, working together. If we don't have scale in individuals, company size, maybe we need scale and partnerships. And I believe that that's a strong opportunity that the super cluster will help is to encourage Canadian and global partnerships, not only in operations, but also in investment. And I think that it's very, very critical that we continue to invest abroad and that we continue to partner abroad to ensure that we have an ability to achieve scale.